Hey, everybody. We are here in Tel Aviv, and we are in what they call now Hostage Square. And uh, last time we filmed here, it was back in uh, January, I believe. And we reconnected with our good friends. And uh, the, uh, you guys probably remember Daniel and Paige Cohen. Uh, we ran into them through Tom Hughes' ministry last January. And so we got... Uh, the ability to uh, catch up with them this time when we were here in Israel. I have my good friend Olivier Melnick to, to be with us during this time. And basically what I wanted to do is bring to you kind of their experience. Because if you remember last time, here's a couple that moved to Israel to do Aliyah, right? Well, God had big plans for us. Yeah, right? <laughs> Aliyah wasn't part of the initial move here. Okay. We just came to visit my grandma, who's a Holocaust survivor. Yeah. And then God said, I, I have other things in store. So the yeah, grandma yeah. visit got us here, but then we made Aliyah, we stayed. So, yeah. Amen, right. amen. Yeah. So what I want to get into, so, so Dan works for Newsmax, right? Yeah. Okay. And... It's, it's, it's a very unique perspective because here's a couple, a believing couple, believer in, a believers in Yeshua, and I, I want you guys to hear their perspective, what it's like living in a war zone with people all around you that want to kill you, and they have some, some crazy stories to share with you that we're going to get into. So tell me this. Last time we met with you guys back in January... What's what have you guys experienced personally from January to now? I mean, we're we're looking at eight months since October seventh, and kind of tell us what you guys have experienced, what you went through, the emotions, all that kind of thing, so they can kind of get a picture of what you're dealing with. You want to start? <laughs> wow. Well, you know, emotionally, uh, it's it's difficult to regulate one's. Emotions and nervous system, sure. you know, living in a war zone. We have three kids. They're 7, 9, and 11 years old. They're back to school full-time after about a two-month break of, you know, okay. distance learning due to heavy rocket um, barrages at sure. the beginning. Sure, And so it was a matter of, like, kind of finding neutral and finding that normal baseline again yeah. with, as a family. Um, but honestly, like, even for myself, I, I'm an adult. I think I know how to manage and, and read my own emotions. But sometimes things just pop up. At unexpected times, sometimes I expect to cry in a moment where something really sad happens and I don't. And then other times it all just comes out in unexpected and inconvenient moments, to be honest. Yeah, and, sure. and as a mom, you know, trying to walk my kids, our kids through that, it's challenging. Yeah. Yeah, I it's can a lot. Imagine. Yeah, okay. kids are so resilient. Um, our kids are resilient. Most kids are resilient. And when, when we first, I mean, last time we met you here, Brandon, in January... Uh, our kids were still sleeping on a camping mattress on really on the floor yeah. in our bedroom. Wow! You know, in our, yeah. in our house, they all had their own rooms, but they were all sleep in our bedroom with the door locked, with the front door locked. But the kids and the dog, you know, uh, wow. the the beginning of the, all of this was really frightening and really scary, and we sure. were on our faces in prayer, <laughs> sure. you know, and, and just saying like, Lord, what what do you want us to do? And uh, we've just come to always felt this hand of protection, like God saying, I've got you covered. I didn't bring you here. To let you fall, right? You know, or uh, to let something awful happen to you, even though a lot of awful things have happened in Israel and around. Sure. And so I think we are just trying to keep our eyes on the Lord. I'm doing a job of just trying to be a truth teller and uh, and just share, right? Just yeah. be a watchman on the walls of Jerusalem yeah. and Esther. Yeah. Just a time such as this. This is why God brought us here. Right. Grandma was the vehicle, right? right. And, right. and her being here uh, and the way God brought us here while the airport was closed during COVID. On a humanitarian, it started. That's how the visit started, and then God said, oh. "I want to unlock and open another door for you." Because I think if He would have said, "I want you to come to Israel," we had never been. Yeah. Uh, I want you to make Aliyah. What's Aliyah? What's that all about? Can I make Aliyah as a believer in Yeshua? You've never been to Israel. We had never been to Israel. That's right. And <laughs> no uh, way. yeah, so we came and we stayed. And so wow. uh, each day, I think, is a kind of a journey of faith for us as a family, uh, as parents, husband and wife, shepherding children. Yeah. Our daughter is a gymnast. Our daughter, our, our, both daughters are into gymnastics and dance. Our son plays baseball. So we're living this life that is that we're trying to give them normalcy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's not normal. I can say if you walk a few minutes from here, you go to the beach. The beaches are packed. Yeah. Uh, people are still living life, but but there's definitely this cloud that feels like uh, like a, a storm could erupt at any minute. Right. Right. 
So you guys shared an interesting story before we got on air um, about a shrapnel uh, coming out of the sky and hitting the school where your kids go. Kind of explain to them that story because most people in the states or in Western society don't have to deal with that. So kind of explain what happened there. You can't relate to something. Can't relate. It's hard to relate. No. Well, I'm going to back up a little bit and okay. say, you know, for um, three and a half years, at the beginning of our time coming to Israel, we chose to homeschool our kids. Yeah. And in the middle of last year, I really felt the Spirit saying to me, it's time to send the kids to Israeli school. Okay. Well, I wrestled with God about yeah. that at first. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, but, actually, we heard that. Right. Well, what? Slowly, okay, yeah. slowly, we just walked forward in faith, and, and God really provided an amazing school for our kids. So this has been their first year. Like, September of uh, this year was the first year they started Israeli school, okay. speaking, learning in Hebrew. And, you know, a month into the school year, this war starts. And so it's been a crazy time. But um, the beginning of the school year, I really felt the Lord impress upon my heart. I want you to prayer walk the perimeter of that school starting September 1st okay. every day. Wow. Pray for your kids' protection. Pray for their hearts, their minds. Yeah. Pray for the teachers and the administrators and their safety. Right. I wasn't thinking about a war. I was just thinking about surrendering my kids sort of to, uh, sure, sure. to this big step and so uh and so i've been doing that from september 1st until this morning mm -hmm. with the last prayer walk and about three four weeks ago we had um another rocket barrage and we had had about four months of quiet yeah so there was tons of rockets at the beginning of the war for yeah. several months in our area we're north of, of tel aviv in a city called herzliya okay and then we had quiet and and life was starting to feel a little bit more day stay normal again okay that particular day, I was actually in Tel Aviv, not far from where we are now, and I get the alert on my phone, and I didn't think it was for our community, but I looked down, and sure enough, it's it's our city, and I realized, okay, two of our kids are home from school, one's still there, and so I contacted my son, and he was okay, and talked to Daniel, and he reported everybody was doing okay. The girls were in the bomb shelter in our home at the time. My son was in the bomb shelter at school, mm. and uh, and about two days later, I'm doing the prayer walk again. And I'm looking at, here's the gate, you know, the front gate of the school. Yeah. Here's where I walk, and here's where the shrapnel fell. You know, maybe like five feet to my left and five feet to my right. Wow. And I felt this surge of peace and really? joy. Really? I felt God speak quietly to my heart. It was never going to make it past this mm. point. Not really. You know, and wow. I, I just felt so much confirmation. The Lord is not going to let anything happen yeah. to these kids. Yeah. Like, he's going to protect them. It's going to be okay. Wow. Uh, but I think there's a principle in that experience. It was sure. profound for me. Right. It wasn't overnight. It's been building all year. Yeah. To, to have that experiential knowledge of the Lord's protection right. um, was deeply profound and comforting. And I think there's a lesson for, for others anywhere. You don't have to be here. Right. To be interceding and really, like, as the Lord leads yeah. The way that he wants us to pray um, and get on our knees and really make a difference. This is where people can fight in yes. this war, in the spirit, through prayer, through intercession. It is the most powerful tool. Wow. What a great testimony. Yeah, I want to add to that, too. Yeah, yeah. That was great. But, you know, right. When you were speaking, it was just really, it's the power of a praying wife, the power of a praying mother. Yeah. And uh, when, when God spoke... Uh, and said, we want you to put your kids in, in school. It was to Paige. It wasn't me. And we were in congregation. Okay. Paige was like, you're never going to leave with the Lord, just told me, right? I said, okay, let's pray about it. And we, we bring it to the Lord. And uh, and the Lord's actually, his answer when we prayed, are, are we to do this? He said, I can protect them, your children, better than you can. Yeah. That's wow. what he said. That's great. And so when this piece of can. shrapnel from this rocket fell, and the kids were taking videos, and the kids were taking pictures of it, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the reality is, did this... Did this piece of shrapnel from these massive rockets that are intended to kill, to maim, destroy children, right? In this case, it fell just outside the, it, right at the entrance and just outside the, the, the school proper. Did it fall out there because of Paige's prayer? Maybe. Maybe not. Or maybe it, maybe it fell out there because of the prayer. Or maybe, sure. regardless, the Lord, we can, he can protect, right? Yeah. And that was a big lesson. We, we just did this, we just did a study together about Amalek and what Paige was just saying there too. And. Amalek was the grandson of Esau uh, in, in 10 seconds, right? And uh, uh, Esau and Jacob, they, they were twins. There was some sibling rivalry. Sure. They got over. Jacob trades his birthright. Uh, excuse me. Esau trades his birthright for a pot of stew. He, they get over it. The brothers do, but Esau never forgives. And the Amalekites, who was Esau's grandson, 
attack. They attack Moses. They attack the Israelites as they're coming out of Egypt. And, and Moses has to hold his arms up in this battle called at, at, at Rephidim. Yeah. Right? And when Moses' arms fall, that's when the Israelites would start to lose. And so Aaron and her have to hold his arms up. Why am I telling you this? Because you, if you're wondering, how can I support Israel? What can I do? Sure. Be in prayer. Amen. Just you holding your arms up, holding Israel. Do, just think about that picture okay. in your mind that I'm praying and I'm holding, I'm holding the hands up of Israel for Moses and Moses' sake. Because when, when his arms are up, when prayers are going up to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel is winning. And I know there's war fatigue, and if people get tired, sure. don't get tired. I mean, we need your prayers now, yeah. now more than ever. Things are things are intensifying. They're not. They're not. There's a simmering. There's always this bubbling and simmering in Israel, but right now it feels like there's actually a boiling that's happening. Wow, wow, great testimony. Thank you for that. So, so you you guys live in the north in, in, in Herzliya, and then we're here in Tel Aviv, and we spent the bulk of our time in Jerusalem. We drove around. Uh, is there a sense of unity in Israel because of this war? Because we've got a more religious part of, of, of Israel is maybe in Jerusalem, less in Tel Aviv. Uh, do, are people uniting on the same front of, of being together against, of, uh, to fight this war? Well, speak, speak on that for a minute. Uh, my answer to that is no. No. Yeah. Uh, look, there is a fierce political divide that's going on that I believe is a spiritual war. And uh, I would like to say everyone in Israel is unified, uh, but the reality is they aren't. Uh, there are some people, look, you can, you can judge the motivations. Uh, there has been an effort to overthrow the Netanyahu government. Yeah, we've yeah, seen been that. an effort to topple the Netanyahu yes. government. Yeah. There's yeah. been an effort to divide right. the Netanyahu government. There are people that say Israel should make any deal whatsoever if it's releasing a thousand terrorists from Israeli prisons, which Israel apparently was reportedly, I have to say reportedly because it didn't happen, but... They were prepared to give hundreds and hundreds of terrorists, convicted terrorists, not people who are terrorists. Yeah, They're going to react terrorists to get back the remaining 100. As we're speaking now, there's about 100 for one. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so That's some people say, and, and look, if it's my family, I would say absolutely. Do whatever we have to do to bring it right. home. So, right. so there's a very delicate balance of how do we protect Israel I believe everyone here wants the hostages. Sure. I'm wearing this and the yellow because absolutely. everyone... Everyone agrees on that, sure. but the methodology of how we defeat Hamas, bring the hostages home alive, yeah. right? How we uh, bring this to a conclusion, bring it to a close. It's gone on, it's, today is day 255. It's been, yeah. right? This has gone on a long time. Wow. Uh, and so uh, I would like to say that everyone here is unified, but there is not really a, there is not a unified front. And I do believe that that's part of the problem. Let me, let me add to, well, do you want to add something yeah. to that? You know, I was just thinking about the recent heroic rescue of those four hostages. Yeah. Yes. That that um, miraculous event brought about momentary unity, okay. where like everyone dropped everything sure. and just erupted in celebration wherever yeah. they were in the country, and that was incredible. Yeah. But it was short-lived uh, for a lot of reasons, reasons Daniel mentioned, but also because of the obvious reminder that there are so many others held captive. Yeah. And there are children whose lives are being put on the line fighting this war. Yeah. And it's, it's at the top of everyone's minds. Israelis are strong people. They tend not to cry. I'm a, I'm a big crier. Mm. So I stick out like a sore thumb in a lot of ways. But uh, I've noticed people are a lot more tender right now. Like yeah. people, people are, like if I start to tear up, other people will tear up too. And you see that they, there's just that little invitation to just, you know, People are so raw, hurt, broken, split open, yeah. desperate for rescuing, sure. for yeah. conclusion. Like, yeah. it's just, it's gone on such a long time. Well, let me ask you both this question. You're, you're a healthy, solid Christian couple. Um, but we've been talking to a lot of the IDF, a lot of people on the ground, and they're telling us something's happening, unfortunately, to the families here in Israel, that... This traumatization, the stress, people losing their jobs. Um, and so guys are coming back from the IDF and their wives want a divorce. And they're telling me this is a, like a major problem. It's not just onesies and twosies. It's a lot. And I, I haven't heard that hit the, the newspaper or anything, but that's just anecdotally what I'm hearing from our guys, our contacts. 
And I'm, I'm watching, uh, we've been asking them and telling them, hey, are, you, are the guys coming back with PTSD? Yes. We just delivered a bunch of PTSD books up to the north because uh, they're saying our guys have this. Are you seeing that sort the social fab- fabric start breaking down because of this ongoing war? And, and there's no end inside, it appears. And what it's doing to Israeli families. Are you seeing the same thing? I can't speak to that specifically, Brian. Okay. Uh, but I can tell you that, you know, we all feel the spiritual heaviness, right? You feel that? Yeah. And especially, sure. uh, you, I know you said you were you're down in the kibbutzim in the seventh yes, you yeah. know, and you can't walk around those places. I was there with Nikki Haley a couple of weeks ago. I was, yeah. here with, I was there with Secretary Pompeo. Okay. I was there with Governor uh, Mike Huckabee when he was here on, on solidarity visits. Okay. And so I don't, want, I don't want to not answer your question. I just want to pivot and say... Um, them being here, you being here, what you're doing right now, and just playing for Israel, I think is is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Just being here and you flying into an active war zone and being here, yeah. uh, because God bless all of these IDF soldiers, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Protect them. who are protecting me, who are protecting us. What do I know about? For, you know, we have Hezbollah, we have Hamas, we have the Lions Den, we have the Al Qassam Brigades, we have the Houthis. We are, Israel is surrounded by people who are, who are sworn to its destruction. Right. And if it's not for the hand of God and the Iron Dome, who I think the ingenuity, it comes from the hand of God, right? Uh, but, but these heroes who are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, uh, the first thing I do and I, as a reporter, I look at, you know, what are the headlines today? Eight people. We had, we've had 12 IDF soldiers killed recently, and just in the last week. Right, and and these are and you see their picture, 22 years old, 21 years old. These are kids that are barely in this, the primes of their lives. Oh boy! You know, so uh, the maturity that it must take. How do you work through going into Gaza where they don't bring their phones, they can't yeah. communicate with their spouse, yeah. the things that they see, what they carry out of them, those the eyes of the window to the soul. I mean, whatever they see and experience in there, that that is with them. Yeah. Um, and so I would just say I, I can't speak specifically to that, but I would just say. Pray for those families. Sure. Pray for those people yeah. because they're they're literally the hands and feet of Jesus and Yeshua. I mean, just protecting this land that yeah. God promised His Jewish people and His yeah. people. I would say this. You know, we've only been here three and a half years, and even in that time, the number of people we know who are deeply personally affected by the tragedy of October seventh and the ongoing tragic war that uh, Israel was uh, forced into. It's like we have friends who have family members being held hostage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, wow. still. And two, like wow. a family member, five, two were murdered. Two were returned in that first um, round, wow. and one is still being held hostage, and we don't know his his whereabouts or his status. status. Uh, we have other friends who have, like, all three children serving in the IDF at the same time. They're on their knees praying like they've never prayed before, experiencing incredible anxiety. Yeah. So I, while, I, while I think in our circles, maybe we don't um, can't speak to the, the divorce conversation, we can speak to the fact that we see the trauma, the stress, disruption, the disruption, the, the, it's, it's so severe. And also some of it is just deferred. It's like deferred emotional maintenance because people have to keep going. They have to keep fighting and they have to keep the families moving forward. So if those things are coming out now, I mean, I wonder what is it going to be like in six months or a year? Yeah. You know, so much of it is just, just push it down and we'll deal with it later. Let's get through this hard time. But yeah, it's incredibly challenging for people around us. And, and it's, it's heartbreaking. And we carry that and we have the Holy Spirit to help us navigate it. We can surrender those burdens. Right. But if you right. don't have someone to surrender those burdens to, yeah. of course. Yeah. You, you, you say, you know, if it goes another six months, you, you, it's, it, it's not sustainable. No. You guys cannot continue like this. You've got, what, 80,000 people uh, displaced in the north? Right. How can you sustain that? I mean, what does it say about northern Israel? Are we just giving up northern Israel? People are not going to go back now? Right. Yeah, there's, there are 80,000 families there. And uh, they, so you can say that Hezbollah is controlling northern Israel. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. They are yeah. controlling because these right. people, they, they could, I suppose, but... Um, we, we have people in our congregation who have been evacuated. They're living in hotels. They're like, they want to go home. The people from the kibbutz near Oz and uh, where you guys walked around, right. they want to go home. God bless them. Yeah. I don't know. I, would, I, know. I don't know how you could go back after what happened. Right. I mean, if that was me, I would sleep with a shotgun on my chest yeah. every night. Or yeah. somewhere else. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. How could you possibly, that these people are pioneers, and if they didn't live there, and if they weren't for that front line, 
right? They're there, yeah. and they want and they want to be there. And you know, I don't know that many people realize this, but a lot of the people that live in the kibbutz, um, they're generally sort of like, for lack of a better word, peaceniks. You know, uh, some of them would drive people from Gaza to hospitals for hospital visits. Here in Tel Aviv, there's a hospital a block away. Uh, Yaya Silwa, who is one of the leaders yeah. of, of Hamas, had uh, some type of a brain cancer, brain tumor. He was operated on by Israeli doctors at a hospital, right? Literally right over there. They saved his life, and they set him free from a prison, and now look what he did. Yeah. Right? Wow. So, you know, it, it's such a complicated web. Yeah. It's so complicated. And so I just think, you know, we, we just have to keep our eyes fixed on and say, Lord, you will never leave us or forsake us, right? Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 30, is, God says, I will keep my promise to you, Israel, unless the sun, the moon, and the stars. When those things cease to exist, that's when I'll break my promise to you, Israel, the apple of my eye. Right. So we have to remember, just love the Jewish people in your life. Love them well. Mm-hmm. Call them. Just, hey, I love you. Hey, I'm thinking about you. And if you're a believer, you don't, you don't have to preach to them. You don't have to even share about Jesus or Yeshua. If you have a Jewish neighbor, take the trash out. Invite them over for dinner. Those little things, I promise you, will go such a long way. And I just like to say, you know, let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does in, in fostering a, a, that connection. Yeah. So tell me this. We've got an audience of parents out there. You, what are your, your ages of your kids? They're 7, 9, and 11. Yeah. 7, 9, and 11. Okay. And so I, I think what's on every parent's mind is, how do you parent kids in a war zone? I mean, what's the conversations like? You know, hey... Uh, we got to be careful. If you hear the siren, you got to run into the shelter. That's not the normal conversation people in the West are having with their kids. How are your kids doing with all of this? Well, we're so far into the war that that conversation is not necessary anymore. Yeah, they know what to do. Wow. And when we, you know, referred to that story just a few weeks ago, when I called my son, he was totally fine. Really? Yep. Yeah. And he said he was with his friends. They were in the bomb shelter at the school. They felt safe. They know what to do. They follow protocol. They've got to get in the shelter within the 60 seconds. Wow. And so uh, I think in terms of just those, like, operational things, like, they're okay. What I wonder about is, like, deep down, what are the worries that they're not voicing, that they're thinking about? Mm -hmm. Um, To give an example, our kids are going to this uh, summer camp the first week of summer, the first week of July. It's a messianic camp. It's okay. about sports and leadership. And yeah. our older two kids did it last summer, and all three will go together this summer. And I said, are you guys excited? And my middle daughter said, I'm so excited. I might not spend the night. It's a sleepaway camp. Okay. I might not stay the night, you know, because of the war. <laughs> she said it, just said it like okay. that. It's a matter of <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm thinking, am I going to drive and pick you up and bring you back? Yeah. I don't know, but this is this is where like these things are coming out and we're trying to take a pulse on how they're doing while also not constantly are you okay are you okay right, you know, right, right right and so i think keeping your eyes focused on things that bring them life things that bring them joy you know our kids are all really active and yeah, uh, all very into athletics and yeah. so as a family the last several months we've just really poured into the things that matter to them and, and as an outsider if you took a snapshot of our life lately you might think that we're back in southern california playing little league and going to gymnastics meets and it, sure. it looks like a normal day yeah but what you wouldn't know is that you know the the initials on our son's Jersey uh, for a fallen soldier that mm-hmm. fell on October 7th wow. who used to play for our baseball Little League wow. you know, and grew up and aged out and, and that when they go to these gymnastics meets, the girls are all wearing yellow ribbons in their hair, hair and there's an empty seat yeah. next to the podium for first, second, and third place and bring them home. It, it's top of mind all the time. You can't, you know how it is here. You can't make it 15 meters or feet, you know, yeah. without seeing something that's in your face. So yeah. it's inescapable. We don't have as many conversations as maybe we should because it's it's just, it's always there. Yeah, yeah. I'm listening to you, yeah. and if this can be an encouragement, I'm listening to you and how you, you, you re- you're interacting with your children. Three and a half years ago, you were not here. You were in comfortable San Diego. You come for grandma. You stay here. You do what you do. And if you, if you think about it, the way your children are reacting right now is because God is also protecting them from all the harm and all the trauma that they could. I mean, they're Californian kids. They've never been to Israel, right? Yeah. I mean, they should be completely disoriented. Yeah. So God is really watching over you guys. Yeah. I, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, we didn't, uh, we haven't shared everything that happened on October 7th sure. with our kids. Sure. And I think most wise parents here probably didn't. Right. Uh, older kids and teenagers 
maybe they have phones and can kind of see for themselves. You know, it's kind of, it, it is hard to escape. You can't walk 20 feet here without seeing a banner or bring them home. Like Paige said, we have a family, our, one of our best friends in our neighborhood, we had five people that were kidnapped. Wow. So, you know, they, they, they don't know the worst of it. I know you do. I don't have to go back through it. But um, we have always tried to affirm our kids' identity is in the Lord. Right? And, and I, just affirming their identity, knowing that, mm-hmm. that they can place their feet and stand firm knowing the Lord Jesus loves them, Yeshua loves them, that it's a perfect love, that God, he'll protect, that we can tap into the Holy Spirit any moment you need to pray for something, whether we're with them or not, hey, pray about that. Mm-hmm. Our daughter had a tough day at school yesterday, and some kid, uh, another close friend, said something that really hurt her and cut her deeply, hurt her deeply. Yeah. You know, and Paige is always saying, like, let's pray about it. Bring it to the Lord. You know, the Lord is, he can comfort you. Pray without ceasing. That's what that means. Just be in prayer. Let God, Lord, that really hurt. That really bummed me out. But we tell our kids, you know, their identity isn't baseball. Their identity isn't gymnastics. Their identity isn't uh, uh, not their parents. And we love them so much. Yeah. Their identity is in the Lord. And I, I hope that that will carry them through some of the hard things that we've already experienced because there are hard things that are still to come. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You were telling me that you, you've taken a lot of dignitaries. You've been with a lot of dignitaries down to the um, Nova Music Festival where that was hit. And, and obviously, it, it, to those people are very pro-Israel. They want to see what happened. They want to get an uh, insider's view on that. But speak to the, the, the growing anti-Semitism. You not only have around you with hostile countries that just want to annihilate you. But what you're seeing globally, is, the, is that shocking you that what erupted, like, but particularly the United States and the colleges and the university? I mean, it shocked us. I mean, from your perspective, what are you, what are you seeing? I try to look at it every day that, I, that I'm telling these stories from Israel, and I actually try to zoom out and, and see it through a biblical lens. Yeah. So if I didn't have, if I didn't know what the Bible said, yeah. if I didn't know that the Bible says that the nations will come up against Israel, that, that no one will come to her aid, it feels like we're in that moment yeah. right now. Sure. And I don't know, yeah. you know, sure. where this where we are on this prophetic end times calendar, a clock, but we know 1948 Israel, so there's a clock. Yeah. There's a stopwatch that's been started. Right. Yeah. You know, but um, I've been to Saudi Arabia too. Have you? I walked down the street in Saudi Arabia. Really? Totally fine. Right, and I, I, I imagine walking through the campus of UCLA or USC while those anti-Israel Hamas, that's called what it was. They were openly chanting in some of these colleges. Right, back to the gas chambers. Right, what? Yeah. My yeah. grandmother survived Auschwitz. My grandmother faced that reality every right. day, and here we are. It's 2024. We're we're back to talking about gas chambers again. Right. You know. So I would just say I'm, I'm disappointed. It's upsetting. It's sad. Israel's safer. Then <laughs> a lot of places, yeah, you know, yeah, these yeah, big cities, New York, right? Uh, and so this, but this uptick in the surge in anti-Semitism, I'm not surprised by it because we know what the Bible says. Yeah, sure. And since we know what it says, I go, okay, it's upsetting, I'm, but I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked by yeah. it. We need to double down in, in prayer about it. Well, right. You know what? I, I've been studying and teaching and writing on that topic of anti-Semitism for 24 years now. And... I, I saw it coming 20 years ago, but I never thought it would be in my lifetime. Hmm. The, the, how fast it has increased and the intensity and the hatred, and it's, it's everywhere now. It's out of the box. And I was, in an article I was writing recently, I was talking about the fact that it looks like anti-Semitism is becoming trendy. Right. People, they want to express their hatred of, of Israel yeah. and the Jewish people now. It, it, it's just, it, it's, it's... So sharing the truth is really important. You're right. And through biblical life. Israel yeah. is four-tenths of one percent of the Middle East. Mm. Well, let me say that again. So just so you hear, in case you didn't catch it, yes. Israel makes up four-tenths of one percent of the Middle East. And way back when, when Israel was reconstituted, the UN came up with this partition plan, and they said, okay, we're going to create a Jewish state, we're going to create an Arab state. And the Israeli leaders, the Holocaust, World War II had ended. They said, great, we can come back into a land that's our own. Wonderful. Yeah. The Jewish, the Israeli leaders said yes. The Arab leaders, they said no. And if you look at the Hamas charter, the Hamas charter today says no peace with Israel. Right. They promised that's to carry right. out an October 7th attack again and again and again. What I'm shocked and was so surprised by was seeing these university, really smart people. Yeah. Yale, Columbia. Right. I mean, these are a lot of smart dummies. 
that are falling for this. <laughs> they are. Right. It looks like yeah. people that have fallen line and sink, or maybe they, for, for the little guy. Israel is four tenths of one percent of the Middle East. This is a land that King David declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel three thousand years ago. Yeah, it's not. You know, this colonial occupier, I, I think they, they just are misinformed, sadly. And Israel has never, this is all I'll say, <laughs> I get a little fired up about this one. Israel has never attacked a neighbor here. Israel yeah. has only been attacked and had to respond. Right. Israel it's, it's is been, responding to an attack, a brutal attack. October 6th, there was peace here. Yeah. There was peace. And October 7th, everything changed. And ever since that, Hamas and these terrorists have been using people there as human shields. And they don't care. And Israel is doing what it must to bring hostages back. And to, to defeat Hamas so that it can't carry out its mission, which they say will do, to, uh, to uh, pull off on October 7th again and again and again. Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to tap into your career now a little bit, uh, Daniel. Uh, you work for Newsmax, and, and it seems to me there's a propaganda war going on. And, and uh, I mean, we see the crazy CNNs and the BBCs and MSLSD or whatever you want to call them. And, and it's like they are totally ignoring the facts and, and the evidence of what's going on on the ground. They're saying, well, Israel's starving the, the Gazans out. This is genocide. Genocide. Not true. <laughs> you got the, oh, IC no, it's not not true. It's the ICC and the yeah. ICJ are going to bring criminal charges right. on Netanyahu. Speak to how important it is for people to, for, for them to understand how important it is for, for someone in the news organization to get the truth out yeah, this, about that. The spirit of deception is so strong. Yeah. Uh, and I really just feel like that is from the enemy. It's from Satan. It's oh, yeah. demonic. Oh, yeah. uh, what Paige said earlier, we had a heroic rescue operation of four Israeli hostages yeah. that were being held in the home of a journalist. Right? It was a, it was a Hamas oh, yeah. terrorist yes. masquerading as a journalist, right. which wasn't a journalist at all. And uh, speaking to the media, response to that, everyone here was thrilled. We got full. We haven't had news like that. It was, it, was a, it was a bright light in what has been a lot of days. Of, you've seen the people here at Hostage Square. Yeah. And uh, the fact that the BBC, Sky News, their, their headline was, Holy hostages were released. Released. Oh, no. Yes. Released. There was Wrong R word. Correct. Rescued. They were rescued. Right. They weren't released. Yeah. They were being held captive. I mean, there was, a, uh, there was an Israeli uh, officer who died, gave up his life rescuing them yeah. that day. Released. I know. I, I read these headlines. I'm like, okay. wow. But uh, the, the deception, I, I could talk for an hour about all of that. Yeah. But it's rampant. It's in. I just feel like it, it just, it's all part of. But the enemy is yeah. weaving this deception, the anti-Semitism, uh, in, in the end times, it, the nation's coming up, you know, sure. against Israel, no one will have its back. And uh, I think the, the most disappointing thing is feeling, I, I didn't think that the United States would sort of leave Israel twisting in the wind the way it has, right? Right. This administration, we support you, Israel. In the beginning, they sent warships here that were parked out in the yep. Mediterranean. Stay back. Right. The name calling for Netanyahu, the outright open uh, mission to topple the Netanyahu government. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. Love Netanyahu or hate Netanyahu, he was elected by the people here. Yeah. So right. you can support Israel by supporting who the people here have elected. Right? Yeah. And uh, I just feel like it's a, it's a hot and cold thing. With the United States, I feel like in Israel, as an Israeli and American, I don't think this current Israeli, uh, you know, government can trust the administration in the United really? States. How can you trust somebody that gives billions of dollars to your arch enemy, yeah. releases all these funds, and then literally not months, but weeks later, there's an October 7th, there's a huge terror attack. Mm -hmm. You would say, that's not my friend that, that's funding, that's the number one state sponsor funding the terrorism around the world. It makes no sense. Right. It makes no sense to me. And you know, America has been blessed uh, over, the, over the decades for supporting Israel right. in a big way. And I think that right now, what's happening with the current uh, administration, you said that, uh, you know, uh, Netanyahu was elected by the people. I wish we could say the same for our current administration, but, you know, it's, it's what's happening right now, it's, I, I fear for America because the blessing, God's blessing over America for blessing Israel, yeah. Genesis 12, 3, it's, right. it's, it's gone. I mean, not on an individual level. There's always going to be, and that's why people, people need to understand that they can make a difference. When I heard you speak, you, you spoke 
straight to my heart when you said, go to your neighbor, knock on his door, mow his lawn, wash his car. Yeah. This is what I do every day with, with, with what I do with, with, with people I can talk to. You can make a difference in the life of one Jewish family, one Jewish person, yeah. by letting them know that there are believers who care. Yeah. And and we need to because right now the Jewish people not just in Israel Israel is really bad because of the war but globally the Jewish people don't feel safe right it, it, it's it's yeah. it's yeah a couple more things before we we, we let you go um, as you analyze what the United States is doing with with Israel what's your take from it I mean I'm looking at this thing and I'm scratching my head with the Biden administration saying. You say you're ironclad for, for Israel, but I'm watching pro-Iranian policies, pro-Hamas policies, pro-Palestinian policies. You're analyzing this whole thing. What's your take on it? Mm-hmm. What do you think's going on with the Biden administration? Um, look, without being political or sounding political, um, I think that right now is a time for choosing. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of Christians, there are a lot of pastors, there are a lot of people in churches that say, ah, uh, you know, I can kind of see their side, but I can also kind of see their side. So, ah, uh, I don't really want to be involved, and I, I don't think it's right to take a side. This isn't that. This is the moment for Genesis 12. This is the moment for the church in the United States to stand up and say, we support you, Israel. Yeah, absolutely. We support you 100%. We support you. How can we support you? What can we do for you? Pray. This is a spiritual war way. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just never been more, more clear to me uh, because, look, no matter who occupies the White House, whether it's President Trump again, whether it's not, whether it's President Biden, whether they have another Democrat that replaces him before the election, God is on the throne. Yeah, amen. Jesus, amen. Yeshua is still in charge. None of this is a surprise to him. None of what's going on is a surprise to him. So we have to be kingdom focused, kingdom laser like, right? We have to have that scope. That's what we have to be looking through. You're talking about Night vision, looking through that scope, right. right? Our scope should be, Lord, our eyes are on you. You say, I'm so, to support the people of Israel and you will bless those who bless Israel. Well, I want that blessing. I want that blessing. We want that blessing, mm. right? And so that's what you can do is, is pray. I can't exp- I have no idea what's going on behind the scenes with the Biden administration. They're making awful decisions yeah. that affect us, that affect me, that affect our family, that affect Israel. Um, and so I would just say, keep Keep in prayer. Just be in prayer. Uh, but none of this is a surprise to the Lord. It doesn't matter who's in the White House or who the Prime Minister is. God, this is not a surprise to God. That's yeah. on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, how can people follow you? You're on Newsmax. Um, can they just watch you sure. on, on Newsmax? Do I got to give a shameless plug? <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. We want you. We want people to follow you guys, yeah. man. Just to just a plug. I'm Dan Cohen TV on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Twitter and Facebook are Daniel Cohen TV. Uh, and I try to share most of my stories that I do there. Uh, some of the story, many of the stories, Instagram was was blocking and and taking down. Uh, if you say certain words like terrorist, if you say Hamas, they I think it's part of their auto censorship, censorship or they just yeah, yeah. just take it out. Uh, and so I have friends who are also correspondents and reporters. I'm on the front lines. I'm here. I'm in Israel and I'm reporting. Right. You know, and they report and they. They changed the spelling of Hamas with an exclamation point or a number three. To, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I refuse to do that. And I get all over Instagram's case. How dare you do that to me? Yeah. I, I'm a correspondent here, and I'm going to share the truth. Yeah. Uh, uh, so please, uh, I, I share most of my stories there, and I, I encourage you to do. But my wife has shares great perspective, too, just about our yes. family and life here as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Paige Elliott Cohen. There you go. <laughs> that was your chance to. <laughs> that was your chance to. Paige Elliott Cohen, Dan Cohen TV, Daniel Cohen TV. Yeah. Thank you. And of course, Watch Newsmax. I mean, yeah. Newsmax, the owner of Newsmax, studied it here in Israel at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He's going to be here in a couple of weeks. Uh, he loves Israel. He gets it. He understands the, the Genesis 12. Yeah. The whole, he, he, he understands. And if you're, watching, if you're watching a media outlet that says the hostages were released instead of rescued, or that calls them freedom fighters instead of terrorists. Uh, what else can you describe these people as for what they did on October 7th? They're not freedom fighters. That was terror. Right. Through and through. Right. And if you're watching somebody and they, there, there's a fuzzy gray area or line between, if they can't tell you the truth, I promise you they're lying to you in other areas too. You shouldn't be watching them. It's a waste of our time. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you guys. We appreciate it. We're going to keep checking back in on you guys every time we come to Israel. 
and getting up, getting updates from you, but we're going to be praying for you. And guys, be praying for them. Follow them. Um, they're in the heart of, of the Lord's land, and they're in the heart of uh, where the Lord wants them to be. Uh, yeah, there's nobody the in the middle of a storm. Yeah, yeah like, and where the Lord wants you to be. It reminds me of, of Peter coming out and walking on the water to Jesus uh, in the middle of a storm. The safest place to be was out in the water in a storm with Jesus. Just don't look not, down. Just don't look down, <laughs> right? But not in the boat. Hands up. So that's, that's what you guys are doing. So thank you guys, Daniel of Age. Thanks. Awesome, man. You guys are wonderful. God bless you. God, God bless you, everybody. God bless you guys. We'll thank talk you. to you guys later.